Hello, you're just in time for the start of a brand new series of Ask Gaspel, and thank you for all your letters. Well, you're one. Uh, I'll be showing your requests in just a minute, but before that, I'd like to introduce you to my very special guest this afternoon. Of course, you all know who it is. Luke Skywalker, alias Mark Hamill. Welcome to the programme, Mark. Thank you, Mike. A bit like a little space capsule in here. Do you feel at home? Mm, very much. All the gizmos and technology. Mark, let's talk about you for a change. Um, a large family. You, you were one of seven, weren't you? Right. I have two older sisters and an older brother and two younger sisters and a younger brother. Are you the only one in this business? Yes, I am. Uh, I have a, my older brother's a doctor. Um, my older sister is studying to be a veterinarian. And I have another sister who works with mentally retarded children and another sister who's a housewife. And they're all very, very different. And your father was a, a naval captain. That's right. Mm. So uh, I moved around a lot. I moved around a lot in the United States, and I wound up uh, going to Japan for the last two years of high school. Yokohama High, Yohai. Still got a, a few Japanese phrases, have you? A little, yeah. I've lost a lot of it, but since I've gone back, you, you pick it up again. You did a lot of television work, didn't you, in, in the early days? Uh, things like Coronation Street. Well, it's sort of the American version of Coronation Street. I did 51 episodes of an American soap opera, but really it was a matter of trying to get any experience I could. So I did a lot of uh, a college theater. I was a theater arts major for two years, and I was in a repertory company for uh, three seasons, recreating Elizabethan uh, Renaissance period. So a lot of Moliere, a lot of Shakespeare. Um, anything that came along, really. So from Shakespeare, you whizzed ahead to your first film role, to Star Wars. Yes. And you had to do a lot of, particularly for, for this latest film, you've had to learn a lot of special skills, a lot of grueling stunts you've had to do. What sort of stuff did you have to learn? Well, in The Empire Strikes Back, it's, it's such a physical uh, ordeal for my character. And I eventually, as we saw in the little film clip, confront the Dark Lord. And I have to look like an expert swordsman, which I'm not. So uh, I, for four, four and a half months before we started filming, I started five days a week with uh, karate, kendo, which is Japanese sword play. Um, I did some weightlifting, and I took fencing. But I have to, you know, give credit where credit's due. And the British stuntmen, uh, Peter Diamond, Colin Skeeping, and Bob Anderson, did a fantastic job because they couldn't double me, really. I mean, Darth Vader has a helmet on, so they were able to use you know, an Olympic fencing champion, but uh, they're the ones that really make you look good. But as you all the way through, there were no standards Absolutely. in that stuff. Um, there was a lot of talk, a lot of stuff written in the press about a terrible accident that you, you survived. Th those reports were exaggerated, I believe. Oh, yeah. I, in early 77, before the uh, film came out, my car skidded and I broke my nose against the steering wheel. And it was sort of forgotten. They set the nose, and uh, the movie came out. Nobody noticed, you know, that there was anything wrong. And I never really thought about it. And over the period of years, uh, it's built up into having my face reconstructed with plastic surgery. Mm. Mm. But it wasn't really too bad, and you are really as you see. Well, that's, that's uh, reassuring. Now some questions from Mark, for Mark. For, uh, Susan Parker from Sunderland, Grant Bailey from Ballam, and Nathan Williams, who is seven years old, lives in Moore Farm in Hereford. It's my son's name, Nathan. Ma Nathan? Yes. Yes, I think a lot of the children know that. They've sent them yeah. their best wishes. Oh. They want to know how you got the part of Luke Skywalker. Um, well, it's funny in a way, because when I heard about Star Wars, uh, I asked what kind of film it was. I knew George Lucas's work from American Graffiti. And when I found out that it was a um, science fantasy kind of film, I'm very interested in special effects myself. So for some reason, it didn't occur to me that there would be any part for me in it. All I wanted to do was maybe go down and see if I could visit the set and, mm. and, and see some of the special effects being done. And when my agent inquired, about it, she discovered that there was a role for a 20-year-old farm boy. So the next thing you know, I just I auditioned, and they did a, a videotaped uh, screen test, six pages of dialogue. I didn't even know what the story was. Mm. And then I found out that I got the part. Mark, Imagine my amazement when I read the screenplay. Uh, yeah, fine. Mark Mania was born. Uh, Jane Arbor of Harlow in Essex wants to know, did you realize how big an impact, and who did really, that, that Star Wars would have when you got that part? I always thought it was going to be a popular movie. It had all the humor. It was in the screenplay uh, as the art directors, John Barry and, and the Ralph McQuarrie, the conceptual artist. I saw all the paintings, and I thought, gee, this is a winner. 
I really thought it would be maybe along the lines of the Planet of the Apes success, mm. but it, I didn't know it would sort of bridge so many different generations of, of fans. Yes. It's really, a, I think, appeals to the child and everyone. Yeah. That horrible word, kid alt, kind of kid covers alt. it. Yeah. Lucy Inglis, who was four years old, was only one when you did that. Wants to know, <laughs> what was it like swinging across that great gap? That was the most fun, and you know, it, in filmmaking, there can be, there's so many things that go wrong, so many unknowns, that uh, you're required to do it over and over, sometimes 20 times. And wouldn't you know that they got that shot of us swinging across in one take. There were four cameras, and they checked everyone. They said, all right for camera one, all right for camera two, all right for camera three. All right for camera four, and I thought, oh no, I was looking forward to this so much. <laughs> Didn't have to do it 20 times. No, but what was nice is that the man that was flying us, we were in harnesses, because mm. as the kids probably know, if you jump off holding a little thin piece of cord, zip, you'll slide right down, get terrible rope burn on your hands and fall. So we were in harnesses much the way they fly Peter Pan on stage. Yeah. And the man that was in control of the flying harness said, you want to fly, you got it, and proceeded to fly me all over the <laughs> set, you know, like a, like a puppet. For free. <laughs> uh, what about the things that we don't expect? Nigel Stutt from Wellfield, Whitley yes. at Bay, asked, have you been hurt during filming ever? You yourself, not uh, uh, in In The Empire Strikes Back, uh, I was doing a scene where they're, they're giant walking machines, these big, you know, uh, about 150 foot high mm. yeah. walking machines. And in one of the shots, I was supposed to jump away from the, the foot, which I smashes down. Yeah. I leaped out and just smashed my thumb. So it, it's, it was just a sprained thumb, but it shut down production for five days because I couldn't hold the lightsaber. It's the so, most expensive thumb in the world. Well, and you know, it's not, you know, you'd think that in, um, you'd, you'd expect the answer to that to be something to, that appears to be far more dangerous than simply jumping out and landing on your, mm. on your Quick little movement, yeah. one thumb, five yeah. days, no work. John Chase Jarry would like to know if you are anything like the character of Luke Skywalker in real life. Do you use lightsabers a lot around the home? No, I wish I had one, but uh, no, I think that probably there's a lot of things in my personality. Uh, and mind you, like I said, George Lucas never really told me what the storyline was. He just said, tell me a little bit about yourself, just like you were asking about my family. Mm. And so I told him basically the same thing. My father was in the Navy, I lived in New York, I lived in Japan, and so forth. So a lot of the, I think, the innocence, the naive quality maybe that uh, I, is still in me. I'd like to think I'm a little more sophisticated than Luke, but I think in The Empire Strikes Back, he's really growing up. It's a different Luke Skywalker in this film. And that's well, some years have passed since yes, you three first years. did the character, right. Uh, Fiona Ferguson from Falkirk and Robert Davis from Exmouth, Robin Clark from Rossington, want to know which film you enjoyed more. Is it possible to like one more than the other? That is difficult to say. Uh, I think it was more gratifying for me as an actor in this one, because I think I get to show a little bit more depth and it's not so much, golly, anymore. It's more, hey. It must be difficult to know the right word to shout when you're faced with something like Darth <laughs> Vader at full blast. Yeah, he's uh, not the nicest guy around. Are they going to be more, obviously, got, there's quite a, a batch of these movies planned. Well, The Empire Strikes Back is the second act of a, th of a trilogy. So the next film, Revenge of the Jedi, is not a cliffhanger. There are some unanswered questions at the end of The Empire Strikes Back. Revenge of the Jedi ties it all up and, and uh, then they go back 20 years and do the stories that preceded Star Wars. Young Alec Guinness, young Darth Vader. And uh, Luke is only a four-year-old in that, so maybe one of the kids watching right now will be up for that part. I was going to say, if, if not, it's going to be some miracles work. <laughs> uh, that's the first program over, I'm afraid. By the way, all of you whose names have been mentioned on the program will get their badges as soon as possible when I finish knitting them. And I'd like to thank Mark Hamill for being my guest this afternoon. May the force be with you for eternity, if not for thank longer. Thank you, Michael. And on behalf of the entire cast and crew of The Empire Strikes Back, we want to wish you a happy Empire Day. Oh, perfect. All right. What a lucky boy I am. Thank you very much. <laughs> Marvellous. Thank you.